hello everybody. My name is Nyla. Uh, thank, thank you for that introduction. I'm a 15 year old really passionate about sustainability. So right now I'm working on a few main projects. The first being a transparent and flexible solar panel and the second being a bioplastic. I also really love to write. So I had my, my first novel released last February and now I'm working on a few other writing projects. I'm super excited to be giving this talk today because I think the butterfly effect is so important and it's all about taking these small incremental steps that lead to transformative change where little things compound to create bigger things. I feel like sometimes when we take small steps in the direction of a larger ambition, these steps can seem insignificant, but who knows what a small step can be amplified to. Most of the steps that I've taken have been in the climate sector. I think we all know about climate change, but the last seven years have been the warmest on record. And this has led to more than 1 million species being at risk of extinction because of climate change, which is crazy. So the first time I was really exposed to this was in grade five. And it was your very typical grade five project where everybody was assigned a renewable energy resource. And so I was assigned geothermal. And this was the first time I really realized how detrimental fossil fuels were onto everything, not only our environment, but also our economy and our society as a whole. So this sparked an interest for me within sustainability. And from there, I would stay on top of the latest news in climate. And then towards the end of grade eight and the beginning of grade nine, I also started noticing something really interesting, which was a lot more solar panels. So when I was driving to school with my parents or driving in the mall, I would notice a lot of solar panels on roofs and in fields. And I found this really interesting and also just very exciting because I thought we were making this transition to more renewable energy platforms. But then when I looked in the statistics, I saw that the share of solar energy in our electricity generation is still around 3%, which was really disappointing and a little bit underwhelming. I started looking into why this could be because I was seeing a lot more solar panels than I previously had been. And then I noticed this problem of accessibility because you pretty much only do see solar panels on roofs and in fields. But I had this thought of what if we could have a solar panel on our window or on our car or on our phone? And what if this could be made possible with transparent and flexible solar panels? I became really excited by this prospect and I started with some very basic research, just learning how solar panels worked and then going a little bit deeper with scientific papers and starting to develop this idea. But something else that I realized was I was this 14 year old really interested in solar energy, but there were still people out there in this industry who had 20, 30, 40 years of experience. And a lot of them were available on LinkedIn, which was a great discovery for me because basically I would look up the coolest solar energy companies and startups and I would just reach out to them on LinkedIn. Like I'd reach out to the CEOs and the CTOs and lead chemists and I'd be like, hey, I'm this 14 year old really interested in solar energy. I'm developing this idea for a transparent and flexible solar panel. And I'd really appreciate like 15 or 20 minutes of your time on a call just to get your feedback. So I was going on calls every single week and I would be like, can you just break apart this idea? Tell me where I'm going wrong. And they'd be like, have you considered this? Like this layer may not be the best idea. Have you looked into this disadvantage? And through this, I started getting validation and I came up with this idea for a transparent and flexible solar panel. And this may look like a sandwich, but it's a 3D printed model of my concept. And this was about a year ago. But now even one year later, my idea has changed drastically because I've continued doing that research and I've continued doing that networking. And so I think zooming out and looking at the butterfly effect here, this started with me just noticing the problem of accessibility and then looking into the basics. So I don't think anyone would look at a 14 year old like researching how does a solar panel work as revolutionary, but it was a big step in me just understanding solar energy to get to the point where I could develop my own idea. And then there was more research and networking and iterating over and over and over again. So a lot of incremental steps that did lead to the concept I'm at today. And I took this framework of doing research and pinpointing problems and networking, and I applied it to another really big world problem today, which is plastic pollution. 
So last year I was on LinkedIn and I was scrolling on my feed and this article about plastic pollution came up. And so I clicked on it and I read through it. And towards the end, there was this big paragraph on different solutions to this problem. And one of the solutions that really stood out to me was bioplastics. Bioplastics are essentially bio-based versions of our plastics today. So where our plastics come from fossil fuels like oil and petroleum, bioplastics come from crops like corn and sugarcane and potatoes. And that's really great because we are saving out on fossil fuels. But when you look at this photo and you see corn, you probably don't see a material. You see a crop that humans consume. And that's a problem because we can't be putting like crops that people need to eat, especially with climate change increasing towards a bioplastic. And I noticed this problem and I started looking at second generation aquatic feedstocks, which are essentially crops that humans don't consume and that grow in water. So they don't take up land to grow. And in my research, I came across duckweed, which is the fastest growing organism in the world. It can double its biomass in as little as 16 hours and it's very abundant. So it's found everywhere except Antarctica. And you can see in this photo, it's just this tiny green aquatic species that grows on water and it's super easy to harvest. I was harvesting like five kilos in only an hour and a half in this photo. So I've really been focusing on how I could turn duckweed into a bioplastic. In this process, I was also doing a lot of networking. And one of the most integral people I met was a CEO of Pond Biomaterials, who I reached out to on LinkedIn. And then this was just towards the beginning of my exploration phase. So I went on a call with him, asked him a few questions, and we started having recurring calls. So he was seeing all of my growth when I was just doing initial research and then looking into second generation aquatic feedstocks and look, then looking into duckweed specifically. And then it was approaching summer, so he asked me to come and work on my idea at his company over the summertime. And so I was doing that and I was doing a lot of research, understanding how duckweed could be turned into a bioplastic, writing a lot of procedures. Then in October, I got into a lab because Pond Biomaterials is based in Denmark. I'm based in Canada. So I had to get into a lab locally here in Ottawa at Carleton. And I was kind of just expecting success right away because I had spent you know, the entire summer writing up these procedures, I thought I'd just go in and the procedures would automatically work. But that was not the case. And there's been a lot of failure. So here in this photo, you should see a white powdery starch at the bottom. And here you should see a white powdery starch at the bottom, but that is not the case. And so um, that means both of these experiments failed. And there has been a lot of failure in my bioplastic and also in my solar cell just in STEM in general. So this is something that I've had to learn to accept as a part of the natural process of building. When I look at my own butterfly effect and my journey, I think the number one driver has been curiosity because you can't fix a problem that you don't know anything about. So just being conscious of problems in the world is really important. And then secondly, there's re resilience because every beat of a butterfly wing does not lead to a big change. Every little step that you take is not going to be a success and that is completely okay. And then lastly, there's networking, which I talked about a little bit already, but I just think it's very important to leverage the people around you who do have more knowledge than you and who are willing to help. I believe that everyone has the potential to make an impact. You just have to love what you do embrace failure a little bit and follow your curiosity. The beat of one butterfly wing cannot lead to a hurricane, but if you have beats after beats after beat with consistency, that is when you can get to a hurricane. Thank you so much for your time.